Hello, happy crocheters. This is Lindsay from WindingRoadCrochet.com, and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute mini basket. If you like this tutorial, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. For this project, we are just going to need some yarn. I am using cotton yarn. It is a size four yarn, but you can use acrylic too. We're going to need a size H five millimeter crochet hook, scissors, a yarn needle, and then this project is worked first as the base and then we will work the side and sew them together. We're going to be making the larger basket and then I'm going to give you the instructions at the end to show you the adjustments. We will also need a stitch marker. So take your yarn, making sure you leave a bit of a yarn in and make a slip knot. Insert your hook. We're going to start by making a magic circle. The way I do it is a little different. I'm going to take the yarn end and wrap this around my thumb, creating a loop, and we're going to work six single crochet into this loop. You want to make sure you go into the loop under two strands of yarn, pull up a loop, and create your single crochet. Now work a total of six single crochet into this magic circle. Once you have six single crochet worked into the magic circle, take your yarn end and pull it tight to close up the magic circle. Now we are going to work row two or round two because we're working in continuous rounds. I'm going to use my stitch marker to march the last stitch of my row. For round two, we are going to work two single crochet into each single crochet of the previous row. So last row we had six single crochet total. This row, because we're working an increase or we're working two single crochet into each stitch, we will have a total of 12 single crochet at the end of the row. So here is my first increase. Moving on to the next stitch, I'm going to work one single crochet into it and then work another single crochet into the exact same stitch and complete this all the way around. Here I've made it back to my stitch marker. My stitch marker is my last stitch, so I will work two single crochet into the same stitch as the stitch marker. And then I'll take my stitch marker and move it to my new last stitch of the round. Now we are ready to start round three. For round three, we are going to single crochet in the next stitch and then increase in the following stitch and then single crochet, increase and repeat that all the way around. So to show you, we'll single crochet in the first stitch. In the next stitch, we work two single crochet. So here is our first single crochet and here is our second single crochet. So we're just going to repeat that again. We're going to work one single crochet and then that follow that with an increase or two single crochets in the same stitch. Repeat that all the way around to complete round three. So we've made it all the way around round three and now we are going to work round four. The repeat for round four is to work two single crochets and follow it with an increase. And then you'll repeat that all the way around. So to show you, we're going to single crochet in one stitch, single crochet in a second stitch, and into the next stitch, we are going to work two single crochet. So this is the first single crochet and this is the second single crochet. And you're going to repeat that all the way around for row four. So now we are ready for round five. We're going to start round five by working three single crochets and then following it with an increase. And we'll repeat that all the way around. So we're going to single crochet once, twice, and a third time. And then in the following stitch, we'll work 
two single crochets or a single crochet increase. So I'm working a second single crochet into the same stitch. So three single crochets and an increase and repeat that all the way around. Now we're gonna work row six for row six. It's again a repeat of four single crochets and then followed by an increase. So to do this, we're going to single crochet once, twice, three and four times. And then in the following stitch, we'll work two single crochet, one and a second single crochet in the exact same stitch. And then just repeat that stitch pattern six times and it will get you all the way around your piece. And we've made it to our last row. This is row seven. In row seven, we are gonna single crochet five times and follow that with an increase. So here we go, single crochet number one, two, three, four, and five. And then in the following stitch, we're gonna work two single crochets. So one and a second single crochet in the same stitch. So take that stitch pattern and repeat it six times until you make it all the way around to your stitch marker. Once we've completed round seven, now we just want to finish off. First, we are going to slip stitch to the next stitch. That is going to kind of smooth out our edge a little bit. And then using a long end, um, about 20 inches or so, because we're gonna use it for sewing, we're gonna fasten off. Yarn over and pull through the last loop on your hook to secure it, and our base piece is done. Now let's make the side piece. We're gonna start by making a slip knot and inserting our hook. And for this basket, we are going to chain 33, though you can easily adjust the height of this basket by adding or subtracting from this starting chain. 33 works perfect for fitting a quart size mason jar, but you can really make this with any chain length. For row one, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. You can go into the chain any way you want. We are going to be sewing up the side, so it's not necessary to go into the back bumps, but just work one single crochet in every chain across for a total of 32 single crochets. When you complete row one, you're going to chain one and turn. And we are gonna single crochet in the back loops only to create the rib texture. To do this, find the V at the top of your stitch, push your hook down and out the back of your stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. That is working in the back loop only. So down the center, out the back, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the loops on your hook. Continue single crocheting in the back loop only of every stitch across. And this is our repeat row, so you're just gonna repeat row two until you have a total of 42 rows. When you reach the end of row two, we will chain one and turn and repeat row two, working single crochets in the back loop only of every stitch across, and repeating this row until we have 42 total rows. So here I have my 42 rows worked. I am going to fasten off, leaving a nice long yarn end that we will use to sew up the side of our side rows. Just yarn over and pull through the last loop on your hook. We are going to take our piece and fold it in half and use a yarn needle and our yarn end to whip stitch the sides together. So to whip stitch, you're just going in one side, out the other, and then back through the first side and out the other. So here you can see that I'm always 
sewing upward and that gives me a nice secure seam. When I get all the way to the end, I'm just going to knot my two yarn ends together and I will weave them in later. Now we are going to sew on the base. So I will take my base piece and using that longer yarn end, I'm going to thread it through my needle and sew it to the base of the tube that we created with the side rows. Now the side rows, the number of rows we have is exactly the same as the number of stitches we have in the last row of our base piece. So all you need to do, working through each row and each stitch, you are going to whip stitch these two pieces together. So I just go through the next row, go under the next stitch, and pull. And I keep doing that all the way around and because we have the same number of rows as we do stitches, we shouldn't have to gather anything up. It should be nice and even all the way around. So I'm just finishing up and I'm going to weave in my ends. You just want to go under some of the stitches and go back and forth a few times and clip off the excess yarn. And once all your yarn ends are woven in, you are ready to enjoy your little basket. You can fold down the sides to create a very sturdy basket. As I said before, this one is designed to fit a quart size mason jar, so you can do that as well. Or you can use it as a small basket that is good for holding hooks or pins or hairbrushes, just whatever you're looking for. You can also slide it onto a mason jar if you like. It's really pretty for holding flowers. I made this basket in three different sizes. So a few options is you could work rows one through five for the base and then slip stitch and fasten off. Then you can chain 20 and work 30 of the side rows to make this small basket here that holds the uh, cotton swabs. Or if you like the smaller, wider basket on the right side, you can work base rows one through six and then slip stitch. And then you can chain 15 for the side rows and work a total of 36 side rows and then sew everything together for this other small basket. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. You'll check out my other video tutorials. Leave me a comment in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.